So let me show you the Shutterstop Attribution Maker. I'll send the link to this out with the recording, but the first thing you'll need to do is to add the bookmarklet to your browser. So follow the first time instructions, and it's quite simple. All you need to do is to grab this link, drag it, and drop it up in your bookmarks bar. And now the bookmarklet's been added to your browser, so it's available to you now when you're browsing, for example, the Shutterstock collection. So here I am in Shutterstock. I've got an image that I want to build the attribution statement for. Here it is. And all I need to do is to click on the Shutterstock attribution bookmarklet. And now I've got that image displayed in various arrangements relative to the text. So we can see here that's floated to the right of the text, for example. Importantly, it also includes the attribution statement that we need to include with every Shutterstock image. That includes the uh, unique ID of this image, the fact that it's licensed to Shutterstock, the author of the image, and the date of access, which is set to today's date. So if I hit the copy the embed code, I have all of the components to make up that alignment. But importantly, this image that's displayed here is a placeholder image only. It's not the final image. And in fact, if we scroll down a little bit to some of the um, larger format images, you'll notice that this is a watermarked version. In essence, what this allows you to do is to place that uh, image into your content as a placeholder reminder for us to swap out later on once the fully licensed version has been paid for and downloaded. But it means that we can continue to develop our content in an agile way and then cycle back to replace that image with its original after it's been purchased. So let's go and do that now. Here I am in Moodle. I'm on a, for example, bit of content. And all I need to do is to jump into the code, paste that link in. And then if we return to WYSIWYG view, we can see that text. We can see the placeholder image and its attribution statement. And what we need to do is, in essence, swap that image out for its paid for licensed original. So there's a little bit of work now that needs to happen. I've got the original image here, bring that into view for you. It's this image here. You'll notice that it's um, a high res image and it's much too large to uh, upload in its current format. So the first thing I need to do is to resize it. Now there are various tools available out there to do rapid resizing. I've chosen one which suits me very well, which is for the Mac. There are similar tools on a Windows machine, but I'm just gonna quickly do that resize now. I use a tool called Rapid Resize. Um, and basically I have it pre-configured so that it resizes to particular sizes. And so the way that this tool works is if I drag this onto this rapid resizer tool, what is generated here in the background is in essence, three different versions, a low res, a medium and a high res version. You'll notice that this is a, what they call a 320 pixels a wide version, a much smaller version, so this is a much more suitable size to go into this placeholder space. All right, so let's look at how we can swap this image out. I'm gonna start over in the editor. If I click on this image, in fact, if I double click on it, you'll see that this is the current image. It's already got some useful um, alternative text. I'm gonna copy that statement so that it's available to me when I upload the original image. So I'm just going to copy that now, close that down. I can now afford to delete this image just by highlighting and then hitting the delete key. You'll notice my cursor is properly positioned where I want the newly uploaded image to be. So I can simply drag, in this case, the 320 pixels wide version of that image into Moodle. And it's uploaded that in the right place. All I now need to do is to apply again that alternative text, which I'd previously copied. So I'm gonna double click now on the uploaded image and paste back in those uh, descriptions from earlier and I'm done. So I can save this image, close this down, save my changes. And what has ultimately happened is that I've uploaded now the legitimately licensed version of the image but it's properly positioned in the content, it's of the right size, and it has the proper attribution statement required by our license agreement.